welcome to Stuck Time to Improv. I'm Mary Scott with Business Riff, and I want startups to be wildly successful. One of the things you need to do in marketing is email marketing, and there's some new restrictions coming in that you need to know about. So I'm very happy to have Rita Thomas, my most popular guest, here from Rita Thomas Enterprises. Thanks for coming, Rita. Oh, thanks for having me. I'm so excited to know that I am your most popular guest. You absolutely are. So let's talk about these new email restrictions. What should we be watching out for here? Boy, I'll tell you, it is so serious. All right. So Google and Yahoo have not updated their their anti-spam um, protocol or regulations in 19 years. So pretty much since we all started using email a lot. And so they're going right now from this level of 19 years ago, all the way up to the high vigilance that it's required today to keep all those spammers out of your inbox. Like, even though we're business owners, we have a personal email address where we want to receive emails from friends and family and like Hobby Lobby and those special places where we really do want to buy things. But it's just literally the wild, wild west in there right now. Spammers have gone absolutely bananas. And so Google and Yahoo are now instituting, implementing really tough restrictions on um, who gets into the inbox in order to keep the spammers out. However, some of us could be doing things right now that make us look like a spammer. So we will also get weeded out and we don't want that. What are a couple of specific housekeeping type things we need to know here? Okay. First and foremost, most important, don't be sending business emails from a free email account. For example, at gmail.com, at yahoo.com, or even one that's like at verizon.net or um, any of the free emails. If you did not buy it and register that name of that domain, then you don't own it. So you, in the future, after February 1st, and let me tell you, it, it is coming. It feels like 15 minutes from now, right? Um, January 31st is the deadline. So you really need to... Uh, look into this and make sure that you're complying with all of it. First one, and really the easiest one to fix is get your own email domain. Go to GoDaddy or Namecheap, or there are a few other places. Buy the name that you want for your company. Then you can sign up for an email address under that name. For example, mine is at RitaThomasEnterprises.com. So uh, you need to own the domain, first of all. Second of all, you have to validate that domain, authenticate that domain on every platform where you send emails from. So this is number two. And you're probably going to be sending emails from just your regular platform, which could be a Google Workspace or your um, domain where you got your, um, like GoDaddy. You're probably going to be sending calendar reminders for appointments and um, scheduling with people sending uh, payment receipts when people buy things, maybe from a Shopify account or a Stripe account and um, things like that. So all of those places where you're sending emails on behalf of your company all have to be authenticated and validated. So uh, the third one is you should only be sending emails to people who are highly engaged because every time you send an email to someone who doesn't open it, you're hurting your online reputation. And the last one, and this is one of the easiest ones as well to comply with, you have to have an unsubscribe button that clearly is, is placed clearly in the email. Typically, it's in the footer. And it has to unsubscribe them immediately and completely. So a lot of us have, and I've fallen into this too, where I say unsubscribe, and then they say, are you sure? And you have to say yes. And then they say, are you sure again? Or then they want you to manage your permissions. And, and I'm just like, I stop sending me emails. Or you'll get emails that don't have an unsubscribe at all. I say, is this for individual emails or just bulk emails? Very good question. This is 
all emails that are coming from your business domain, all emails, because they're all business emails. So if I, well, like we had an email earlier today confirming, okay, three o'clock, we're going to see you, you know, on the podcast. That right. was just me and you. And that was still a business email because it came from my business email address. Right. And it covers- But my email to you came from a Gmail account. Oh, Yes. <laughs> So, so the one that you're using is a Gmail account? Yeah, I use businessriff at gmail.com. And yes. I try yes. to get Mary at businessriff.com and was told it wasn't available. Yeah. So you probably, yeah, whenever your domain that you want is not available, let's say on GoDaddy or something, just make a slight change to it. Like I wanted um, funnelgodmother.com and somebody's already using it. So I got funnel-godmother.com. So okay. And then you have do... to pay for that through Google Workspace or one of the other. Well, you pay for it wherever you get it. So if you get it on GoDaddy, that's who you pay for it. Or if okay. you get it on Namecheap. There's another one that has a one, two, three in it. There's a few places where you can get your name. So yeah, Mary, I recommend that you get a domain with your business name in it and that you get an email address. Now, this email address should cost you anywhere between $2.50 to $6.50 a month. They don't cost very much at all once you pay for your domain. And domains cost a different amount of money based on how popular the name is. <laughs> but um, I'm paying around $20 for all my domains per year, you know, so that's not too bad. So we're gonna put um, information in the comments about how to get more information about this email shift through yeah. Rita's masterclass. Mm -hmm. And and we all better get on this right away. So yeah. I'm Mary Scott with Business Riff. I want startups to be wildly successful. And one of the best things you can do is book a synergy call with me at businessriff.com. And join us again next time for Stuck Time to Improv.